Just the other day, we published a video on Alan Wake 2 and how we tested it on 32 different GPUs from AMD and Nvidia. Well, today is all about CPUs because being such an intensive game graphically, we wanted to see how much of that is offloaded to the CPU and how much of a difference each CPU makes in terms of performance. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello, mate. You all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just got to put it together. It's going to be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature patched motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you, you realize that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits, or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver, thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> and you call me the stupid one. So I don't want to dwell on the game because we did an analysis of the settings and various graphical presets in our GPU video. So if you've not seen that yet, definitely go and check it out on the channel. Instead, I want to kind of jump straight into the performance numbers, especially as this is likely going to be regarded as one of the most intensive games of 2023, especially when you couple in ray tracing, which as we know, can actually increase CPU usage quite dramatically. So that's why we've tested on low, medium, high, and also with ray tracing turned on to see what kind of differences that actually makes in terms of performance. Now for our tests, we tried to keep the parts in both our AMD and Intel systems as similar as we physically could, with obviously the exception being memory in the case of AM4 using DDR4 and the AM5 and Z790 based systems both using DDR5. For our AM4 system, we used the Gigabyte X570S Aorus Master with 32 gig of Kingston Fury Renegade RGB 3600MHz CL16 memory. For our Intel test system, we used the ASUS ROG Maximus Z790 Extreme motherboard, while our AM5 rig used the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. And both systems were used with 32 gig of Team Group T-Force Delta RGB 7600 MHz CL36 memory. You also notice that each CPU utilized different speeds of memory, as we spent quite a lot of time binning each CPU to see what the maximum speed each individual processor could do. For those who are worried about us not using 6000 MHz CL30 memory for our AMD testing, we are actually working on some content putting the likes of the 7800X3D through its paces with slower and tighter memory versus faster and looser memory. So definitely make sure you check that out when it's released. Now for our graphics card and to rid the system of any GPU related bottlenecks, we use the Inno3D RTX 4090 iChill X3OC with the GeForce 545.92 driver. And all of our testing was done on the latest version of Windows 11 and the latest respective motherboard BIOS versions available. So with that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. Starting things off with 1080p on low and set to FSR2 native, as there's well no way of disabling FSR or DLSS fully. It's here where the 7800X3D from AMD sets the pace at 209 FPS, with the 14900K a small 2% margin behind. Intel take up the next three places in the chart before AMD 7950X fights back, just edging ahead of the i5-14600K, which had to utilize slightly slower memory. It's then a bit of a mixed battle between AMD and Intel, with the 7950X3D coming out at just 160 FPS, and matching the performance of the 5800X3D from last generation, which is then followed by the rest of the 5000 series, though performance on all processors are still going to lead to an enjoyable gaming experience overall, even on low. Moving up to 1440p, where arguably the processor starts to become less important, and AMD seemed to take over the top part of the chart, again with the Ryzen 7 7800X3D leading the pack at 162fps, with other Ryzen 7000 series CPUs sitting just a couple of fps behind. Again, the 7950X3D is the worst performing Zen 4 chip and sits just ahead of a wave of Intel processors, of which the 12900K, 13700K, 14600K and 13600K all sit identically at 154 FPS. Though the other high-end chips like the i9-14900K and 13900K only come in one frame per second slower. As we move down, again the Ryzen 5000 series sit at the bottom, with the 5600X coming in last at 134 FPS, so not a million miles behind, and again still perfectly playable. 
Then moving up to 4K where CPU performance is essentially taken out of the equation and we find all processors sitting between 89 FPS like we see on the Ryzen 7000 series including the 7950X, 7800X 3D and 7700X all the way down to the Ryzen 5 5600X at the bottom at 82 FPS. Though what's most interesting is how the processors are grouped. We find the 7000 series all sitting in one group at the top, while Intel sit in a group in the middle, with the bulk of them coming in at 87 frames per second. And then the Ryzen 5000 series just below that, but again, at such a high resolution, we're less reliant on the CPU now and more reliant on the GPU. Cranking the settings up to medium and looking at 1080p, again, the 7800X 3D is really able to harness the potential of the game through its 3D vCache at 205 FPS. The i9-14900K comes in 4% slower, but still at a healthy 197 FPS, followed closely behind by the 13th gen equivalent and i7-14700K, until we move further down and see the Ryzen 9 7950X coming in at 192 FPS, followed by the i5 chips from both the 13th and 14th generation at around 190 frames per second. Then moving further down, the Ryzen 7000 series make up most of the middle part of our chart, with the only exception being the 7950X 3D, which really does seem to be struggling in this game, even being beaten by the 5800X 3D from last generation. Up in the resolution to 1440p and all of the results fall much closer together. Again, the 7800X 3D manages to claw another victory, even if only by a single frame per second, over the rest of the 7000 series stack. Our first Intel result is the i7-13700K, which comes in 4% slower than the top result and matching that of the 5800X 3D, followed closely behind by the bulk of the Intel processors tested, with one exception coming by the way of the i5-12600K, which now matches the performance of the Ryzen 9 5900X, which sits second to last in our standings. Again, as we move up to 4K, the CPU is not as important as the RTX 4090 is allowed to stretch its legs, with most CPUs coming in within two frames per second of each other. Now, as expected, the 7800X 3D comes in top, matching the 7950X, 7700X and 7600, and the majority of our Intel results sit in the middle of our chart, again with the 12600K just falling below, though only by a couple of frames per second, so nothing of significance. Then, as expected, the Ryzen 5 5600X comes in last at 78 FPS, though that only signifies 7% between the top and bottom results. Moving on to the high preset, 1080p, and again, as we expect, the 7800X 3D comes in on top at 194 frames per second, which gives us a small 4% lead over the latest Intel flagship, 14900K, which now matches the performance of the Ryzen 9 7950X, followed closely behind by a smattering of other Intel CPUs and the Ryzen 7 7700X. As we move further down, there's a bit of a mixed bag between AMD and Intel as they battle it out, though again, disappointing results from the 7950X 3D, making it just not a great offering if this is the game you're looking to play. 1440p sees all of the results falling within an 11% range of each other, with the bulk of the results coming in around 131 FPS from the majority of the Intel stack. Again, AMD lead the way with the 7800X 3D at the front and also with the 5600X towards the bottom, so you could argue that AMD have something for all types of budgets that give respective performance to their price points. While well, Intel is more of a stale offering that just sits awkwardly in the middle, though there are a few exceptions like the Ryzen 9 5900X, which now sits at the bottom of our results. At 4K, there really isn't much in it with the majority of the processors offering up performance that is within two FPS of each other, with the only exceptions that fall below that being most of the 5000 series and the 12600K from Intel. Though even then, it's only another 2 FPS lower, so nothing of major concern. Again, the 3 dv Cache 7800X 3D matches for the top spot, and the majority of the Intel processors sit in a cluster towards the middle of the chart, so at least you can say they're consistent. Moving on to ray tracing, where you could argue that a CPU has to work that little bit harder, and for the first time at 1080p, there really isn't much in it. Yes, AMD still remain at the top, but only by a margin of 3%, which is still a win, don't get me wrong, but nothing to really shout from the rooftops about. Again, Intel come in identically across the majority of the processors with a margin of error 1 FPS lower result from the i9-14900K and the 12600K now performing the poorest below the 5600X from AMD. 1440p is very much the same story, though this time with no real outliers and all results sitting within a few frames per second of each other, around 73 FPS. There's a bit of a mixed bag here and really any slightly obscure results can be put down to margin of error, though we do see the same patterns of the Ryzen 7000 stack sitting at the top, Intel below that, and then the 5000 series at the bottom. A pattern that we've seen throughout our testing. 
Then as we move up to 4K with ray tracing enabled, no CPU here is going to give you what I'd call an enjoyable experience at just over 30 FPS. Because throughout my extensive CPU and GPU testing, I just found that under 60 FPS, and especially as you draw closer to 30, the gameplay in general just feels wibbly wobbly, a bit jarring, and just did lead to me feeling, well, a little bit queasy, especially when turning fast. A bit like when some people use VR for the first time. Though upscaling will fix this, but will lead to some people just not liking the output that upscaling can give. Overall though, to put some context on the results, the 7800X 3D matches the 13600K for the top spot, while the 12600K just manages to take the bottom spot too, with a single FPS variance between it and the 5600X from AMD. And again, we find Intel claiming the middle ground for the most part, with obviously some exceptions. Now, because it was a topic of contention on some of our last videos, I did want to run some memory scaling just to see what differences, if any, we see on a few of the processors when using slower, faster, or tighter memory. And it's here where there really isn't a huge amount in it at 1080p. Though we do find that even on AMD, which was the most contested point, that the faster 7600 memory is the better to be had, with a 4% margin when moving from 6000 MHz CL30 memory to the faster 7600 MHz CL36 memory. There was less of a difference on the Intel i9 14900K, with the exception being 4800MHz, which did see a drop in overall frames per second. And some odd results on the Ryzen 7600, where the tighter timing memory actually performed worse than DDR5 6000 CL36. Now at 1440p, Intel again shows very little difference with just a single FPS difference on the i9 14900K, though I chalk that up as a margin of error. And the same on the i5 13600K, separated by just a single FPS when moving to 4800MHz memory. The 7800X 3D saw the biggest difference with the 7600MHz speed commanding a 4% increase in performance over 6000MHz CL30 memory, and a larger 6% overrunning the same CPU with 4800MHz memory. Though the Ryzen 5 7600 sees less of an improvement over 4800 MHz and match performance across 6000 and 7600 MHz regardless of timings. Then as we move up to 4K, the differences across the board are much more negligible, with only one or two frames per second separating the outputs. Though again, we do see, in the case of the 7800X 3D, that the faster memory is the ticket to really squeeze out that extra performance. Though you could argue that the extra cost just isn't worth it overall. Lastly, I just wanted to check out CPU scaling on the two flagship gaming processors, the i9 14900K and Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, to see how they react at, kind of to the various settings and resolutions, which shows to a degree how well optimised the game actually is. On the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, we do see, especially at the lower resolution, that the difference between low and medium really doesn't change all that much, with a 2% difference at 1080p. While well, that margin does increase to around 6% at both 1440p and 4K. Moving up to the high preset across the board sees drops in performance of around 5% at 1080p, a larger 10% at 1440p and 13% at 4K. So there are some steady drops in performance as we move up in presets, while the higher resolution sees the largest differences as expected. Then looking at the 14900K at 1080p, we see drops of around three to 6% as we move up in quality presets, which isn't a huge drop in performance for extra added visuals, though the game does look stunning no matter the preset. While 1440p sees larger drops of between five and 10% as we cycle through from low to medium and then to high. Then as we look at 4K, the drops in performance range between 6 to 12%, which again isn't a huge amount and still ends up with a playable frame rate on our system, though featuring an RTX 4090 that's kind of expected regardless. So as always, a ton of data that we've gone through, and I think it further instills my point that I made in our Alan Wake GPU video that the game is pretty well optimised. We didn't see any sudden huge dips in performance as we move through the graphical presets, though that's not to say that the game isn't extremely demanding, because it is. We ran all of our tests with an RTX 4090 and the fastest consumer processors on the market. And what's very plain to see is that if you're wanting to enable ray tracing, then upscaling is well, very much needed. What we also found is that AMD's 5000 series are starting to be pushed down quite dramatically, while Intel, for the most part, seem to be holding up fairly well. Though moving from an older Intel CPU to maybe something newer and higher end didn't actually really make well, much of a difference in terms of overall performance. On top of that, it's very evident that AMD is the better choice for this game. As the 7800X 3D and other Zen 4 processors did top our charts consistently across multiple resolutions and quality presets. 
though of course there are always exceptions, like the 7950X 3D, which, I don't know, just further shows that it's just a part that frankly isn't needed. Because while at the heart of it, the 7950X 3D is still a great chip for productivity, the gaming side of things gets completely blown out of the water by the much cheaper 7800X 3D. And if wanting a balance of gaming and productivity, I think we've shown quite a few times before that Intel is the far superior choice there. It's also, well, a little bit, no, actually quite a bit cheaper. Now, don't get me wrong, all processors did well, and apart from ray tracing turned on at 4K, all CPUs managed 60 plus FPS. And considering Alan Wake 2 isn't the fastest paced game in the world, you could fall just below 60 and still have a decent experience. Though as said earlier, as you near to 30, you can really start to feel the difference. And that's when it becomes a point where me personally, I'd be dialing in either the quality settings or the resolution in exchange for some extra performance that really will make things feel a lot smoother overall. Now, when it comes to the technical stuff, it's clear to see that Alan Wake 2 does like extra cache in terms of 3DV cache on the 7800X3D. But as mentioned, that kind of fell short on the 7950X3D. And as per our memory scaling section, the fact that the Ryzen part wasn't able to utilize faster memory didn't really make much of a difference anyway. The other thing that didn't really make much of a difference is core counts and clock speeds, as we frequently saw Intel CPUs swapping places. And if core count and clock speed was the big limiting factor, then the i9-14900K or even the 14700K would have been topping the Intel portion of our charts constantly. Well, that wasn't the case with the Intel lineups huddled together for the most part in the middle of our results. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're wanting to play Alan Wake 2 and be top of your game, then the 7800X3D is the CPU of choice. While on Intel, you really have a bit more of a choice as to where your hard-earned cash goes. Though I wouldn't put all your bets on just one game and instead look at overall performance across a multitude of games or factor in the other needs that you may have. Now in terms of AM4, if you're still wanting to go down that route or are looking for a reasonably cheap upgrade path, then the 5800X3D is a bit of a no-brainer, as it was constantly near the top of our AM4 results, with an exception here and there that could be deemed as margin of error. But again, the game does like 3 dv cache, and that's what helped it along in kind of those sets of tests. Now, I'm under no illusion that no one is going to buy a system based on one single game, and nor would I advise you doing so. And we will, depending on how you guys like this video, do more of these in the future as new games come out. So let us know in the comments section if you want to see more CPU analysis type content across games just like this one. For now, yeah. That's going to do it for this video. If you liked it, then a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then definitely look at joining the exclusive Patreon Members Club, where you'll get access to all of our charts, exclusive behind the scenes content, bi-weekly game nights, and much, much more. The link for all that great stuff is down below. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.